In just over three weeks, Donald Trump will be sworn in as the next president. According to the Sierra Club, Trump will be the only world leader who still denies the science behind climate change. During the presidential campaign, the Sierra Club produced this ad highlighting some of Trump's comments. All of this with the global warming and the, that, a lot of it's a hoax. It's a hoax. I mean, it's a money-making industry, okay? They said that you called climate change a hoax. Is that true? Well, I might have. I believe that climate change is not man-made. We're going to cancel the Paris Climate Agreement. Our president is worried about global warming. What a ridiculous situation. Following his election, Donald Trump has nominated a number of climate change deniers for top posts, including Exxon CEO Rex Tillerson for Secretary of State, Oklahoma Attorney General Scott Pruitt to head the Environmental Protection Agency, former Texas Governor Rick Perry to head the Energy Department, and Congressman Ryan Zinke to become Interior Secretary. Now scientists at federal agencies are expressing growing concern that the new administration may attempt to destroy or or bury decades of scientific studies on climate change. Senior Trump adviser Bob Walker has already proposed stripping funding of NASA's climate research, describing it as, quote, politically correct environmental monitoring. In a scramble to protect existing government climate data, campaigns have launched to copy and preserve decades of government-sponsored climate research. A guerrilla archiving event was just held at the University of Toronto in an attempt to save the climate studies on servers outside the United States. Organizers in the U.S. are planning additional events in the coming weeks to archive vulnerable government websites and databases that contain climate research. This comes as the end-of-term web archive, a project administered by the Internet Archive, gets underway. The project captures and saves U.S. government websites at risk of changing or disappearing altogether at the end of presidential administrations. In the wake of Trump's election, the Internet Archive has announced it'll be moving a copy of its archive to Canada. For more, we're joined by two guests. Lori Allen is with us, assistant director for digital scholarship at the University of Pennsylvania Libraries and a member of the Data Refuge Project to Rescue Climate and Environmental Data. And Brewster Kale joins us. He is a computer engineer, internet entrepreneur, activist, and digital librarian, the founder of the Internet Archive. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Lori Allen, why don't you start out by explaining what you're doing to preserve climate change research and why you're so concerned it might be erased from government websites? <clears throat> Thank you. So, what we're doing in the Data Refuge effort, it's a really large collaborative effort. Um, with, including the Internet Archive and, um, as you mentioned, the folks in Toronto, as well as um, researchers, scholars, librarians, um, citizens, scientists from um, many different places, basically creating safe channels for data that is currently um, stored and made accessible through federal websites and through the federal government to move to new locations so that it we can continue to ensure access to um, these facts for research. It's also an effort to raise awareness um, of the value of this data and um, of how data is preserved and shared um, today. So basically what we're doing is holding events. There'll be one in Philadelphia uh, January 13th and 14th, where we'll use protocols that are uh, appropriate to the data that we're trying to save. So for as much as possible, we'll move to the Internet Archive um, through the end-of-term harvest project. And then for other kinds of data, we'll move to trusted repositories um, here in the U.S. and around the world um, to make sure that we continue to provide access to them. Lori Allen, could you say a little bit more about the kind of data you're looking to archive? The main concern is not documents, but rather the analytic software that may become obsolete with uh, disuse. Could you explain the significance uh, of such software to climate research? Absolutely. I think, um, as, as, you, as we've talked to scientists and researchers who, you, who rely on federal climate data, um, so many of them use a variety of sources. So um, the, there are—one uh, of the big challenges is in 
figuring out ways to preserve and continue to provide access to in, to the data themselves, but also the software used to analyze those data. The uh, scientists rely on data in multiple forms, and so we're um, we're identifying protocols that we hope will be appropriate to each, you know, whether it's the software used to create uh, derivative um, versions of the data that are more useful for various purposes, um, or to, if possible, save the software themselves or the software itself. Um, where, you know, this is—it's a really sticky problem. And to the extent, I think, that we can work with the Internet Archive, we are. But as you mentioned, there are data that just can't be scraped, use, they, that can't be copied using web archiving. And so for those, it's basically going to have to be um, a case-by-case -case basis, which is why we're um, so many of the events are engaging with developers and um, software engineers in, in collaboration with scientists and librarians and archivists to sort of you know, identify those materials that are most vulnerable, that are most valuable, and take them, you know, one at a time and, and figure out how we can continue to provide access to them.